Welcome to Passive Cash Flow, a channel dedicated to guiding you towards financial independence through sustainable passive income streams. We have had quite a few discussions about life perspectives and mindsets that will make our lives more comfortable and lighter. Today, we will return to the topic of personal finance, which we haven't talked about for quite a while. In today's episode, I will share with you some common mistakes in personal financial management that many people often make. These are also experiences that, if I had the chance to go back in time, I would really want to share with my younger self. Oh, the other day, I shared a short story about my assistant. He is someone I had the opportunity to guide and accompany throughout his financial freedom journey from the time he was an intern until today, when he just crossed the milestone of financial independence. From his story, from the perspective of someone who guided him throughout his financial freedom journey, I sat down and summarized some lessons that I think will be useful for you. However, after sitting down and summarizing, I found quite a lot of experiences and lessons that I wanted to share with you. If I were to tell all of it in one episode, it would be very long, so I will divide it into several episodes. Starting with this first episode, these are experiences in managing finances for ages 20 to 30. Before continuing, since today's topic is aimed at those from 20 to 30 years old, I ask for the permission of the older ones to use the word friends in today's episode. Consider it as if I am chatting with my younger siblings. This is the age when most of you are still in the single phase and income is not high yet. But it is a very important time for you to build mindsets as well as personal financial management models for yourself. Built correctly, it will be a good foundation to boost your future financial journey. Conversely, if it is not built correctly or worse, not built at all, it will cause many problems for you in the future. It is very likely to lead to the possibility that our whole life will not have financial freedom and we will have to struggle to work to earn money. Normally, when learning about these issues, people often tell about successful stories. However, I think the most effective way to learn is to learn from failures, from the mistakes of those who came before. Therefore, the experiences in this article, I will share with you the mistakes, and I will divide these experiences into three main groups. First, these are experiences in the accumulation phase. Second, it is in the spending phase. And finally, experiences in the investment phase. Now let's start with the first phase, which is the accumulation phase. And the most common mistake in this phase is not having a plan to track finances. I will detail this in episode 4 of the financial freedom journey, so stay tuned. This is very important, because just being able to grasp your current spending situation alone will help you a lot. It will give you a picture of how much your current income is, what your minimum spending is, and what your standard spending is. Knowing these numbers, we will have a foundation to start the next activities, such as how to expand additional income, which I will detail later, and more importantly, how to optimize our spending activities identify which expenses are necessary, which expenses are unnecessary to eliminate them. Because after all, the most basic foundation of the financial freedom journey is to maximize income and minimize spending. If we do not have an overall picture of the income and expenditure situation, it will make us easily fall into the situation of spending as much as we have. Noti that the most important thing is not how much money we make, but how much we save. There are people who make a lot of money, but then they also spend it all, and the end result is still that they spend all month. But there are people who make much less. But thanks to tracking and financial management methods, they still have a surplus to save. So that's the first mistake. That is, we do not track our income and expenses. The second mistake that people often make, which I also often repeat, is getting caught up in bad debts. The most typical of these bad debts is credit card debt. The reason is that its convenience creates a state of shopping where we don't feel like we're losing money. So, for any item, we just swipe the card and it's done. The money is still deducted from the system, but the feeling when we shop is that the money does not leave our pocket. This is a trick that banks use to deceive our brains to stimulate spending activities. Therefore, when we get into debt, the bank only requires us to pay a small debt called a minimum payment and the remaining debt can be deferred to the following months. But of course, this will come with an interest rate, and these interest rates are usually not small, 
and it is a bad debt. Also, precisely because of this convenience, many people have fallen into credit card debt. According to statistics in the United States, on average, each American owes more than $6,000 in credit card debt. These are just average numbers, and there are many cases where they owe teens of thousands of dollars. Therefore, credit cards are a very dangerous thing. And of course, if you know how to make good use of credit cards, they also have many advantages. For example, if we pay on time, it can be seen as a way for us to occupy capital for a certain period of time, without having to pay interest. In addition, we can use it to accumulate points, and its biggest advantage is to build financial credibility for those who are just starting out, which in English is called a credit score. However, it is a double-edged sword. If we don't know how to control it, credit cards can easily lead us into bad debt. Therefore, for those who are not confident in their financial management skills, it is best to close all these credit cards. Later, once you are used to controlling your spending, then you can consider reopening them. The next mistake in these stages is not diversifying our sources of income. I also mentioned the concept of diversification in the investment episode of the Financial Freedom series. But usually, when it comes to the concept of diversification, many people only think about the investment facing, meaning diversifying their investments, but few people go to another aspect that also needs diversification, which is income. In fact, this is very important, especially in the beginning phase. The reason is that at this early stage, you often feel that you already have a main job, consider it done, and that main job becomes your only source of income. This is very dangerous, because if anything happens that makes the main source of income no longer available, such as the recent pandemic, then we no longer have any source of income to reserve. And doing so is like putting all eggs in one basket. From my observation, in the vast majority of cases, the main job rarely takes up all of your time and energy. The most typical example is from the story about my assistant that I told at the beginning. Before coming to work as my assistant, for a long time, he had a main job at a technology company. Outside of working hours, he also took on freelancing for some other projects, and on weekends, he even worked as a bartender at a bar. And that's not all. Whenever he was free, he would take his camera to take pictures and sell them on stock photo sites. Thanks to his proactive creation of multiple sources of income, combined with living very frugally for a long time, and combined with the right investment direction that I guided, it is not complicated, anyone can do it. It only requires one thing, that is patience. Thanks to all these factors combined, his financial freedom journey only took about seven years, meaning it was much earlier than others. Through his story, we see that to get the sweet fruit, we must step out of our comfort zones. It is a choice, not fate. It's just whether we have enough determination to get up and work when others are resting, relaxing, or not. That's the third lesson. We must diversify our sources of income. Try not to stop with just one source of income. There are still many other lessons in this savings phase. But if I say it all, there won't be enough time to continue the next parts. In another episode, I will come back to continue sharing more experiences in this phase with you. Now, let's move on to the common mistakes in the second phase, which is the spending phase. And the first and most common mistake in this phase is that we spend on things that are not worth it, things that seem wasteful. This often happens when our income phase begins to increase. At this time, money also starts to become more comfortable. So you also start to have a habit of rewarding yourself with a series of toys that mostly are not really necessary. There is a concept to indicate this behavior. People call such actions colloquially as trying to keep up with the Joneses. For example, you are driving a normal car with no problems at all, but looking around, your friends are all riding expensive scooters. So when you have a little income, the first thing you do is take the money to change to a scooter to keep up with them. And this happens at all income levels. When you have a little more money, you are driving a normal Toyota car. When you receive some investment, you take the money to change to a Mercedes. But those are cases where you have income to buy, it is already wasteful. There are even more dangerous cases, that is borrowing to buy, and then hugging a series of bad debts into yourself. 
My advice is that we should not care about who is more precious than who. What matters is whether our spirit is comfortable or not. But now, suppose if we only consider the aspect of awe. You try to compare now. One way is to drive a shabby car like my assistant is driving, but in his hand, he has an investment package of millions of dollars. On the other hand, driving an expensive car, but behind is a mountain of debt. Every month you have to pay almost all the debt. So who do you think is more precious? Personally, if I were an outsider looking in, I think my assistant would be more precious. That's the first mistake, that we let the pressures of formality in society affect our financial decisions. The next mistake is that we spend on very popular activities, such as going for coffee or partying, drinking. This cost at first glance doesn't seem like much, but if accumulated over months and years, it becomes a very large expense. Now, try to imagine if you could save these costs and invest them, it would generate tenfold. So the waste in these areas is not that we lose a dollar, but really we lose 810. Of course, I don't mean to say that you should live like a monk, never going for coffee or meeting friends. But there are many ways that we can protect ourselves from these costs. I'll give the first example with the simplest way. That is, we should set aside a separate amount for this. For example, every month after receiving your salary, you pick out one to two million or so, depending on your income level, put it in an envelope, spend all of it, and then consider that there is no more money to go for coffee, drinking anymore. Next month, if you have money to put in the envelope again, then continue to party. The second level is a bit more complicated. That is, you try to sit down, analyze what the root of these activities is, and then think of a way to still get those core values, but it costs less. For example, if you like drinking coffee, instead of going to a cafe, try buying coffee to make at home. Or if you like drinking coffee because you want the atmosphere of sitting with friends, then try inviting a few friends to your house to drink coffee together on a weekend morning. Who knows, it might even be more interesting than going to a cafe. Of course, these are just a few random examples that I thought of right now. Surely you will come up with many more creative ideas than me. The main point I want to make here is that we analyze the root of each activity we want and then think about whether there is a way that it costs less but still ensures those values for us or not. That's the second mistake. That is, we spend too much money on drinking and coffee activities. The third mistake, which is also a very common practice at this age, I call it the costs of dating. First, my advice is that at this age, if possible, don't date at all. Try to focus on your career and building your own finances. Because I assure you that once you have built your career and finances, your future love path will be much wider. This is the advice I gave to my assistant, and for a long time before, he didn't date much. He focused entirely on his work and building his finances. As I mentioned earlier, he worked continuously, so where was the time to date? Recently, he has a girlfriend, and you try to think, with the solid luck in life, in finance at present, how interesting he would be. Of course, here I don't mean to say that the girls come to him because he has a lot of money. But there is a fact that, even for girls who are not greedy for money, who doesn't admire a self-made millionaire with a lot of life capital and interesting stories. That's the advice I gave him, but I understand that it's strict advice and few people can follow it. Therefore, for the majority of you, if you love, it's okay. But when you love at this age, you are very likely to make a common mistake, especially for boys. That is, you try to build an image for yourself that you are a person with a higher life than what you are having. Of course, not everyone is like that, but surely you also agree with me that there are many cases like that, and this is something that should not be done. First, love should start from the most honest things about us, then it can last. The person you love will be the person you want to meet most often. And you imagine, every time you meet, you have to act, it's very tiring. Second, now let's analyze more carefully. We will see it as a very meaningless thing. Because if you use money to impress girls, you can only attract girls who like money. Then what do you think if later they find out that you don't have much money? Then what will the image you are building be like? The second case is for real girls who don't care about money. They want to go long-term with you then I believe they will also appreciate that you know how to control your spending and are focusing on investing. 
For that reason, boys, you should honestly share with your girl that you are pursuing a financial freedom journey. In most cases, I think the girls will ask further, what is financial freedom? And from there, it will be a very interesting topic for you to share your understanding with her. And it will be even more wonderful if you can inspire her and then both of you will carry out the financial freedom journey together. Then I believe it will be a very solid foundation for the future family of both of you. I assure you that the success rate will be much higher than taking her to eat at a five-star restaurant to show off that you should eat five meals a day here. That's the third mistake we often make in this second phase. Like the previous parts, I still have a lot of experience to share with you in this phase, but I will save it for later episodes. So now, let's talk about the mistakes in the third phase, which are the investment phases. The very obvious problem is that there is no money to invest. There's a saying I really like, roughly translated as, success is when preparation meets opportunity. Certainly, in your investment journey, there will be times when you come across opportunities that you are sure that if you invest in, you will win. For example, you have an acquaintance who needs to sell a house cheaply because they need money urgently. Or when I invest in the stock market, there are many cases where the companies I am following suddenly drop in price due to a rumor that I am sure is due to crowd psychology. And after the crowd psychology passes, the company's stock will definitely rise again. In such cases, if there is no available capital to invest, we can only sit and watch the opportunities pass by. That's why in the early parts of today's video, I emphasized a lot about saving, because if there is no investment capital, we are very likely to miss such opportunities. You not only waste the money you could have saved, but even more, you also lose all the investment opportunities that sometimes increase many times those savings. Here is the cost that people often call the opportunity cost, a concept that is also very important in financial management. The second mistake is that we don't invest early. This is a very common and harmful practice in investment fields. There is a concept called compound interest, which means that with the same capital, if we invest early, our return rate will be much higher. Therefore, we must start investing as soon as we have idle money. In my case, my main investment channel has always been the stock market, and therefore, I also passed on my experiences to my assistant. But surely there will be many other investment channels, as long as we have to invest as early as possible. One of the key points to achieve financial freedom is that we have to make our money earn more money for us, don't let the money sit idle. The third mistake is not investing in oneself. Investing here is not just financial investment, but also investing in oneself. Investing in knowledge and health, including both physical and mental health, are things that I am sure will never be lost, but only increase when we invest. These are a few personal financial management mistakes that young people in the stages from 20 to 30 years old often make. I hope that these shares will help you avoid making these mistakes. There are many other experiences that I want to share, but within the framework of a video episode, I cannot share them all. I will pause here, and in the future sometime when there is a chance, I will come back and share more. If you find this content useful, I hope you will share it with your friends and relatives. Thank you for your attention. Oh, if you like this video, remember to hit the like button to help our video reach more people.